Hello world, this will be the first podcast that I do in English by myself. Um, my name is Sean Buranahiran. I am an American-born Thai person. <laughs> I was born in California, but I am Thai. And right now, I'm currently filming in Thailand. So nice to meet everybody. I've been doing social media for such a long time, but never have I had a, a team member that understands English as much as best. So the reason why we can do English podcast now is because of we have best. Hello, best. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah. What's up? So we're going to start it off by talking about what I'm interested in. I think we're going to call this podcast. I'm thinking between thought experiment or spirit science because I like spiritual things and I like science, how they go together. So today I want to talk about the first time that I meditated. Um, I think in this podcast we will talk about a lot of things because I just want to see what works, what people like, what you like, let me know. So today we'll talk about uh, meditation, intuition, reincarnation, death. We'll talk about destiny. Does everything really happen for a reason? Uh, and one Zen story that um, sounds really strange to me. It's about a tiger and a strawberry. And also maybe talk a little bit about Gary Vaynerchuk. So let's get started. I don't want to make this long. I want to make it about no more than 30 minutes. So the first time I meditated, there's a saying that people I, I like to that people like to say is that you can meditate anywhere. That is true, but also the location does have an effect on how deep you go in the meditation. There's some places that um, help you be at peace, uh, get in tune with yourself way faster. So there was one time I meditated in a cave and I posted a picture and someone said, you didn't have to go all the way to a cave. You could have just meditated at home. Although that's true, you don't get the same effect at home. Let's say uh, there's so many distractions. You can easily get food, watch TV, look at your phone. Um, also, there's Wi-Fi signals, there's electricity, there's 4G, there's so many things that can distract you or even just mess with your brain frequency. So um, although what that person said was true, it's not necessarily, uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't go meditate in a cave or in the mountains. Personally, I like mountains where you're very high, there's no Wi-Fi signal, there's no electricity, that, that's nice. Um, there's no cell phone reception. I think that really helps you go deeper into the meditation. And caves, there's, there's no way you will get signal reception or Wi-Fi or anything that would mess with your brain inside of a cave, except bats. I, I meditated in a cave and there was like bats flying around me. That was scary. But they eventually stopped and uh, I was able to go deep into the meditation. So the first time I meditated, I went, it was for my dad's birthday. I was 19 years old and I thought this was stupid. This is so stupid. Why am I here? And uh, I didn't believe in it. I didn't know anything about meditation. I just went to the mountains with my dad and he said, okay, we're going to, we're going to meditate here all night. And, um, Luckily, I had a psychology teacher in California who told me, uh, he would say in every class, you're here, so you might as well be here now. If you're in this classroom and you're thinking about your ex-girlfriend, you're just wasting time. So I took his words and I said, 
I'm already up on top of this mountain with no Wi-Fi, no cell phone reception. I might as well just sit down and focus on my breath with my dad for his birthday. Um, long story short, I feel that I was about an hour and a half in the meditation. And uh, I started getting this tingling sensation in my stomach. And um, uh, it started to feel really good. Like, like the feeling like when you have butterflies in your stomach, like when you like someone, but it's like times 10. And it feels really good. The, the word I could describe it was ecstasy. And then it kind of disappeared. And I kind of just realized, uh, came to many realizations. If, uh, if I were going to sound um, a little crazy at that time, what happened was I heard uh, something tell me that, hey, hey, I found you. Or no, it's like, hey, hey, finally, finally, you can hear me. And it said, you've been like, I've been trying to reach you for so long. And then it showed me like this little light, like a star, like a little light. And it said, this is you. You're not the body, Sean. You're, you're this. And this then and, and we're the same person. We're the same thing. So it was like I was talking to uh, my soul. Um, or whatever you want to call it, your higher self. or uh, But I'm just going to say soul. I'm so scared to come off looking really crazy, but I mean, it's my experience. So I'm just going to let you know my experience. And I could, I could say that, hey, that was about nine years ago that maybe I imagined all of it. But either way, it changed my life that night. So uh, it said that you're not the body, you're this, this light. This soul showed me like this light, and uh, that night I I came to realize so many things that I was no longer attached to my body. After that, I uh, started believing uh, that um, all humans are connected. Uh, we're all brothers and sisters. I started to look at trees differently from that. I started to believe in. Um, uh, energy, spirit, and souls, and I started to have more compassion to animals and people. And uh, what was uh, even better was that my inner voice, my intuition, that, that spark of light that I met that night was with me for the rest of my life ever since then. And I was able to uh, make uh, more intuitive decisions on, on how to live my life, which brought me uh, uh, everything I have today, to where I am today, to all the people I'm around right now. Um, so it was a little opposite of what I see many people do is that they achieve success and then they pursue a spiritual path. But for me, I pursued a, accidentally pursued a spiritual path and then success followed after that. So I think that's why this story is a, is a bit interesting because at that time I was 19 years old uh, nobody knew who I was um, but after that day uh, I realized that I just need to have good intention go with the flow of life with the stream of life pay attention to the signs and everything would be fine so I was so confident in in uh, the flow of life, the stream of life, or, or you could say my, uh, my, that I would be taken care of if I have good intention and I listen to that inner voice all the time. So I would meditate and pursue my, uh, I didn't have, uh, I was very flexible. I didn't have a goal that I needed to do this, but I kind of just looked in the sky one day and said, Whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to say, I'll do it. If you want me to pick up trash, I'll pick up trash. And uh, if whatever you want me to say, I'll say it. Um, and just please give me a sign what I have to do. And after that, my life just went, went on like this crazy journey of <laughs> 
doing uh, music, doing acting, leading me to social media, and doing what I do today, making inspirational videos, interviewing inspirational people, and now doing this podcast and meeting you. So in a nutshell, that was my first time meditating. And ever since then, I've had this, this really strong intuition on what to do, how to live my life, who I should get close to, who I shouldn't get close to. And um, that inner voice, I would describe it as a feeling. It, it, it's like this strong feeling, this strong pull uh, for you to go somewhere to do something or to talk to this person. Um, it's not really the intellectual mind uh, analyzing. Um, I got to meet the Dalai Lama from uh, doing what I do today. Um, I've uh, reached financial freedom. I have a beautiful wife that is a psychologist for family. So I get treatment every day whenever I'm not feeling good. I'm surrounded by very positive people. So I think uh, um, my way worked for me. And hopefully my experience, sharing my experience can help you on your path. So I really am a firm believer in meditation can lead you to success. Okay, let's go to reincarnation. I had this idea about uh, reincarnation from living in Thailand for about four years and they really believe in reincarnation uh, not everybody but I would say 90% of the of the adults here so my take on reincarnation I'm thinking that when we reproduce we're just cloning ourselves. so I guess one way that humans can live forever is to keep reproducing their DNA and their genetics over time and I'm just a clone of my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather. He's just been cloning himself this whole time. And what if the knowledge we gain from getting deep into the meditation, what if that's us tapping into our genetics, tapping into our DNA, and just downloading information from what's deep down inside of us? Rats that, they did an experiment with rats that they had rats smell peppermint, and they shocked the rat. And they did this over and over, and eventually the offspring of that rat would be afraid of the smell peppermint. To be uh, precise, it's actually the, the grandson of the rat that got shocked that would be afraid of the peppermint. So he, he instinctively knows in his DNA, in his genetics, to be afraid of, uh, of that smell. And there's many cases of this. There's cows that ran into electric fences in the farm and then their offspring's offspring would be afraid of, of fences. So we keep so much information within us that we don't even know. I, my, I like fighting. I do Muay Thai. I competed. And my grandfather did Muay Thai and competed. But it skipped my dad. My dad is a very peaceful man. So we have so many things innate within us. So I'm thinking that when we meditate and we somehow become wiser, what if we're just tapping into the information that our ancestors uh, kept through thousands of years? And what if it even goes all the way back to when we were uh, single cell organisms, like when we were a shrew or when before we were even a human? What if it goes all the way back? What if we can tap into all of that? Maybe that's why when you meditate deep enough, you get a feeling of oneness, of connection with all animals and all trees, and, and you have such a love for people. So I, 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 that's why I'm, I'm not trying to uh, understand it like voodoo. I want to understand it through uh, things that seem practical. And this seems really practical to me. When you meditate, you tap into all those things. You tap into the memories of your ancestors. And then that's why some people seem like they're old souls or they're wiser beyond their years. Or um, Sometimes you come out of meditation and you, you understand life a lot more without having to speak to anybody. The way that I did my meditation was uh, I 
just focused on my breathing. When anything came up, I just moved it aside and went back to my breathing. This type of meditation is called samatha. Um, there's two big main types. There's another one called vipassana, which is you observe everything that comes in. Uh, both, are, both are very, very important. But I'll talk about the two different types in a different podcast because it's so, how do you say, uh, it's so detailed. Okay, so that's my take on reincarnation. We're just, be, we're just cloning ourselves over and over again. Who, you, who I am today, I was that guy a thousand years ago. I've just cloned myself over and over and over again. That's, that's what I think reincarnation is. Um, and to stop the reincarnation cycle is like you don't have children. You fight the, you fight the need to have children and you just die um, without uh, letting your DNA go on. Yeah, that's the practical way I would explain reincarnation and why you get wiser through meditation. Okay, so let's go to death. Death, for me, um, is not a scary thing. I actually embrace death because I w really want to know what happens after you die. Um, I see death as a reward for living, uh, for, for completing uh, your mission in life. Uh, f personally, I suffer from many things like um, I have flat feet, my feet hurt every day which eventually it, it makes your knees hurt. So my knees hurt every day. I have sleep apnea. Uh, since I was born, I can only breathe through one nose and that makes me tired all the time. Uh, my, um, you know, eyesight is short. I, um, so when I live my life, I feel pain all the time. So I feel like death is like the ultimate rest. Like I love sleep. So if you die, if I die, I get to just sleep all the time and I get to know the truth. So personally, uh, death to me uh, is, is a reward for completing your mission in life. I feel that I will die when I complete what I was born to do on this earth. Um, I always heard the quote that the good die young. My idols all died young. I like uh, Martin Luther King. Gandhi who didn't die young, but his life was short. Uh, I like Tupac, he died young. Um, JFK, he died young. So all of my idols, they, they died before uh, their time. They died before old age. So I feel that I would like to die before old age as well. Um, but I know I have to complete what I'm supposed to do in this earth first. I want to read a poem that I wrote about death when my cousin died at about 23 years old. I wrote this poem after seeing so many people cry at his funeral. I'll read it and I will tell you the meaning behind it. Do not weep when I perish from this world, for I have not truly perished for I am not truly the body, but still you weep. Deep down, you unknowingly weep enviously for yourselves, for it is the cry of your wandering soul confined to the shackles of the flesh. While my chains of time have been shattered into the infinite, while your spirit only roams free in the dreams you no longer recall, but still you weep, but only for yourselves. I saw in my cousin's funeral when I was about 15 or 16 years old that everyone was crying their eyes out, but he lived such a happy life. He was such a good guy. He came in the room, made everyone happy. He was like the, the life of the party. And I feel that he, he lived a good life that so good that the other side wanted his company. So 
I was happy for him that he got to go. But the reason why I wrote that you unknowingly weep enviously for yourselves is because I'm thinking, what if deep down your soul wants to go back home as well? But so it's kind of like they they left and you're crying because you're you want to go too, but you're still stuck here. You're still chained to the shackles of your flesh. You're still stuck in this body while the other spirits get to go. So what if we aren't crying because we're sad that they died? What if we're crying because we're sad that they died and they got to go and we're still stuck here in this world? So I write a lot of things about death because I want, when I die, I want my family to read it and know that I was happy. I wanted to go early. I'm not going to kill myself, but um, because then, yeah, I, I would, I would never do that. I have, I have fun in my life, but I'm, I write for just in case my family wants to like see these things after like someone goes through my phone or goes through my emails when I die, that they'll see that I was ready to, to die. And I actually wanted to. So that's why I say still you weep, still you cry, but only for yourselves when you're at a funeral. I run into people that want to kill themselves, but I tell them that you were born here for a reason, for a mission. You were here, sent here to do something. So if you kill yourself, you are not completing the mission. And I personally, pers you'll be, I feel like you'd be punished. I feel that that's why they say in, in, in Christianity, you kill yourself, you go to hell. When you kill yourself in, in Buddhism, you like be reborn like a dog or something. Not more. Well, dogs are cool. But I don't know, you, you get reborn into something like something bad and you have to start that cycle all over again. So I don't know. I don't believe in either one. I just know that uh, they're just trying to stop you from killing yourself. And I, I personal, personally believe that we're born to do something. Either we were chosen uh, to do something or we chose to, to be born to do something here on this earth. And that being said, that leads right into destiny because if we're born to do something does destiny exist and does free will exist? And I have some weird, I have some interesting thoughts on this. That destiny to me is that some destinies are greater than others. Some destinies are super detailed for some people's lives and some destinies are a little more free. For example, if you're looking at a big company, let's just say a company that, that everybody knows. Let's say Tesla. Let's say Elon Musk. Elon Musk is the, well, I don't know if he is anymore, but when he was the CEO, he was so busy. He had to fly all around the world, have meetings. It's like his, his life was scheduled and detailed to do this particular activity. But his workers, let's say the people that, that put the cars together, those people work a certain eight hours a day, but the rest of their, of that time, the rest 16 hours of their life, they get to choose whatever they want to do. So it's like th their destiny is detailed only eight hours a day or th for this certain point of their life. But Elon Musk's whole life is dedicated to this. It's like he's trapped into, uh, this destiny, which, which he enjoys because I feel there's a lot of books that say your destiny and what you want is the same thing. It was put inside of us before we were born. So I think some people have more free will than others and some people have less free will. Just like an employee at a company and the CEO of a company the CEO of a company has to dedicate more time to the company, but an employee, uh, they have to dedicate a little bit of time, for, uh, um, a certain amount of less time in that company. So there's different levels to free will, different levels to a destiny, just like there's different levels of, of ranks inside of a company. Does everything happen for a reason? Uh, 
I believe that some things happen for a reason. Like the big events in your life, the people, the, the people that you meet, uh, the people that, the, the disappointments, the big disappointments you've had in your life, I believe all those happen for a reason personally. But in a practical way, even if that's not true, if you're somebody that believes that everything happens for a reason, then you automatically find the lesson in every situation. Find the meaning in every situation or every person that you meet, even the good people and even the bad people that hurt you. You will find the meaning behind it and you'll, you'll learn a lesson from it if you believe that everything happens for a reason. It's just a mindset that that is, is a very healthy mindset to have. It keeps you positive and it keeps you learning. I think it's a good thing to believe that everything happens for a reason. The last two topics, the tiger and the strawberry story. This one I heard was so weird to me that I, I didn't understand it that much. Uh, that's why I want to talk about it today. One day there was a, just a, the village happy guy was walking through a forest and a tiger started chasing him. The tiger chased him off a cliff and he fell and hung onto a branch. The, the village, the happiest person in the village looked down and saw another tiger. So he couldn't climb down. In that story, he looked over to the left and he saw a strawberry. And he went over to the strawberry, plucked it and ate it. And it was the most delicious strawberry that he ever tasted. And the story ends. And Zen stories are supposed to do this to us. They're supposed to make us feel kind of empty or kind of like shocked or like what just happened? Like what, what is this? Why did it end like this? And then in that feeling, something beautiful happens or you can interpret it the way you want. The way many people interpret it online is that um, he was just enjoying life. Even though there's crazy things going on, he can find something beautiful in that moment and enjoy life in the moment. Um, some people interpret one that was interesting was somebody said that he is a representation of the ignorance and humans that you're you're about to die but you're being distracted by things and this and the senses that we have like the sense of touch smell taste sight and you are just ignoring uh life you're you're just being fooled to you know go Go out, have fun, enjoy life. So that was, a, was another way that someone else looked at it. The way I look at it was the tiger that chased him represents life. And the tiger at the end represents death. The tiger pushed him, chased him off the cliff. So that's when you're born, right? You, you, some, I, you may not have been, you may have not chose to be born. You were just born. So this guy got chased off from the beautiful forest, bam, right into life, in between life and death. So he decided to enjoy life, even though you didn't choose to be born, and then eventually you die. But he's in the middle. He's just deciding to be happy and enjoy life. That story is one of many that I'll tell in this podcast. But there are so many better stories than that one. I just saw that this one was pretty, was talked about a lot. And I think it's because of how confusing it was. Uh, there's other ones that, that um, have a clearer message in them. So let's talk about someone that is very... <laughs> Famous online right now, Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, Two million followers on YouTube, like about like six million on Instagram, something like that. 
personally, I personally I like Gary Vaynerchuk. He's uh, I call him the street Buddha because a lot of things he says is very similar to what the Buddha says, but he says it with curse words um, and a really high pitched voice and in a way that it resonates with the masses. I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think that uh, I know he doesn't read a lot, apparently, from what he says, uh, but that he can come to these realizations that these same things, uh, these same philosophies, these same ideas can come out of somebody in a different time, but just in different words, uh, is very beautiful to me. I like one word he says is pulling from opposite directions. So when he feels extremely happy and successful, he'll think of something opposite. He'll think about um, times that were hard for him so he can become balanced and become neutral. So his, his whole goal is to become neutral. So when he's feeling down or when he's feeling disappointed, he'll think about uh, the opposite of that in his life. And then he'll, he'll come to a, a neutral point in his life. And uh, Buddha talks about that as well, being in the middle. Um, not being too happy, not, not being too sad, not dwelling in your achievements or your failures. Um, I like so many things Gary Vaynerchuk says. And uh, honestly, I did, I did so many things Gary Vaynerchuk said online, said about what to do online. And I get my results show that what he talked about was true. Um, he said, leaving comment, not commenting back on the people on your post is like serving dinner at your house and leaving to go watch a movie and you just let your friends eat. You don't take care of them. You don't, um, how do you say? Yeah, you don't entertain them. Um, you create a deeper emotional connection when you talk to people. Uh, I do that in the direct message more than in the comments. I feel that the direct message is even deeper. So um, Gary Vaynerchuk, thank you for all the advice you've given throughout the years. So just to sum it up, we talked about meditation, intuition, reincarnation, death, destiny, the tiger and the strawberry story and a little bit about Gary Vaynerchuk and listening to him produced so many great results in my life. Um, so thank you guys for listening to my first English solo podcast. I think, please let me know what you want. You want spirit science or you want thought experiments? I'm thinking thought experiment because I'm not going to be talking about spiritual things all the time, although I, I really enjoy that. Um, and um, you guys want me to talk about anything, please comment below. I'm reading your comments because I, that one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I see people saying, w when are you going to make English videos again? So I'm going to make this one long video and I'm going to cut out different segments, about five different segments and upload it uh, maybe every day. And then I'll try to do this once a week. And if you're ever in Chiang Mai, give me a call at Tao Cafe, T-A-O Cafe. And uh, I've had so many people come through and interview me with my equipment. So if you want to do that, let me know. I'm more than happy to uh, welcome you with open arms to Chiang Mai, Thailand. Okay, everybody? Sudikap. My name is Sean Buranahiran. <laughs>